repeatedly going on and on. Pain analgesia opiate theory by Van Rie in 2000 states, stated that endorphin, endorphins released following NSSI, which leads to feelings of euphoria. This is only though temporary. Of course, you have the pragmatic theory where everyone most believe that rapidly effective means of regulating one's affective experiences. It's not moving. Okay. There are also what we call a consideration of risk factors, demographic factors, social factors, media influence, adverse childhood events, and neurobiological factors, which we shall discuss one by one. The demographic factors are that, as I have earlier said, it starts from adolescence to early life or to early youth, which, which means that it is between 18 to 23. That is the peak. Then we have mostly female gender. And most of those practicing NSSI are of higher IQ. That's why they can manipulate, can hide what they are doing. The social factors involves dysfunctional relationships within the family, outside of the family, such as friends, classmates, and other significant others. They also get bullied. There is also what we call social contagion. What they see or what they hear from, you know, I, I know how, I know some, <clears throat> excuse me, some of you may have heard about the movie Girl Interrupted. Yeah, that was the first movie I also saw. Uh, this was still during my residency <laughs> many years ago. And uh, of course, songs just like the songs of Nirvana and other uh, new punks and old punk uh, groups. No? So we very well know that they have some influence on the uh, actions of the young people with regards NSSI. And identifying with certain subculture, as I already said about, uh, mentioned about, like even the, the, the singer groups, the movies, and so forth. So, and then there is also the non heterosexual orientation because of the stigma of the LBTQ uh, community. There seems to be a higher incidence among them, but there is no uniform data to, su to support to say how many percentages is that, but there is, according to vignettes or smaller, I mean, group of articles written about it very seriously. NSSI related search so note 42 million times per year on Google. That's made, that really made the eyes of the psychiatric world now more conscious that there should be more focus on this. This is very timely because we will tell you what's our problem with this uh, certain diagnosis. Continuous, we'll talk about the adverse childhood events which usually had been an experience of those people who are using, you know, uh, the uh, self non suicidal injurious acts, no? Parental abuse and neglect or deprivation seems to be common among them. them. Then there is sexual abuse is also quite linked, but not so much. It's just moderately linked to the development of NSSI. Only indirect childhood maltreated. Not, not, they don't even have to be necessarily shouted at or I know they do not necessarily be physically punished, but they could just be shouted at repeatedly in the house that really makes them uh, possibly doing such cuttings that they used to have. Uh, incidentally, yesterday, as we were preparing this le lecture, I did have one case which exactly uh, really uh, point to the T 
of this particular uh, symptoms that we are discussing. Parental critique or apathy. Parents sometimes they say, you know, my child is always making me miserable, so I just ignore him. I don't talk to them. I don't discuss my problem with them. Our psych education, our psychological education in our clinic should include the fact that if they cannot talk to you how they feel, how could they talk to others? And if they talk to others, they may not have the right advice. And that's a big problem. We have to encourage parents to be very uh, involved in their children, especially the teens. The abnormalities in the neurobiology, we don't know that the endogenous opioid system is affected. Neural processing of emotionally, socially, or physically adverse stimuli is there. Uh, I will not go farther to this. I will give this to the neuro, psych neuro uh, experts. But there is a neurobiology of NSSI. Uh, they elevated pain, they elevated pain thresholds, as we said, they become euphoric for a short period of time. And there is such a, a, a saying, the term pain of set relief. So their pain is uh, done for only a certain period of time. So that's why I, when they have the feeling of being sad again, they do it all over. There is a decreased level of endorphins in the body. Okay, so we summarize the risk factors, adolescent age, female gender, social contact with NSSI, other users, and being bullied. And of course, as I earlier said, emotional abuse or neglect is a factor. The four-factor model of NOC, whom I said have written a lot, had put this into this uh, different uh, ways, okay? He said that there is an automatic positive reinforcement and they create a desirable physiological state they generate feelings, not alleviate them. They make them happy instantly because they, they, they came from a, a feeling of uh, being not good, not worth. And so they do self-punishment. They, they do their own self-criticism. And they get somehow some sexual gratification from cutting themselves. And sometimes they probably will tell you that when I cut myself, I know I'm alive. I said, why do you have to cut yourself? I just have to know I'm alive. But actually there is also the control or the empowerment sense because when they do that, it seems like they can control the environment to keep watch at them, okay? The social positive reinforcement function of NSSI. To gain attention, as I earlier said, to access to materials. There is a very good interpersonal influence. Usually, cutters group themselves together. And then the, there is institutional influence, meaning there is a culture in that school, a culture in that particular situation. Communication between them is open about how good it is but the communication to significant others in the family is, of course, bothered. And sometimes it becomes a game of manipulation. Friends who are willing to teach how to endure themselves, they teach other uh, fellow teenagers to do it. And there is even sometimes they try to bet. The, I don't know if you are aware, it was not mentioned in any of this NSSI, but I remembered very well about a decade ago or a little less de a decade ago, that there was what we call choking syndrome, where they try to choke themselves just, just by uh, putting their own hands on their own neck. And then they try to see who lasts more. I think that is an NSSI. It was never mentioned here, but 
I was just thinking it could be an NSSI. Because they don't think that they, they are going to die from doing it themselves. No, I mean, just putting your hands around your neck, of course, when you cannot break, break, the tendency is to let go. Some of them do go really faint. They really faint, fainted. Automatic negative reinforcement, meaning it's a negative reinforcement to the person concerned because it alleviates tensions, but, you know, it really also affects them in a way. They do not, they will go into some dissociation, chronic mental illness, substance abuse, and they reenact the past trauma. Social negative reinforcement. The function of the NSSI here is to avoid responsibilities, consequences, or interpersonal task demands. That girl I saw yesterday was. He was telling his parents that he is not interested to go to school anymore. And whenever the parents will remind her to go to sleep on time so that she will have enough energy the following day, what happens is that the more he will stay as late as possible, so he could not go to school anymore. And then he would say, I have no energy. I cannot do it anymore. I am depressed. And... He said, I will kill myself. That was the time that the parents really decided to bring her to me because at first they thought that she was not as intent as she sounded to kill herself. But we say a minority of them may get angry for not being believed on. They begin to go up higher and think of killing themselves actually. Ah. Uh, they hurt and thus they hurt self instead of others. Hurt self before someone hurt you. Okay. Make free sense. Back back. So actually. Those are the integrated theoretical models of development, as I have mentioned earlier. And this is just a, a uh, diagram to show that what ends up as NSSI later. No? So you consider these tal risk factors, genetic predisposition for high emotional cognitive reactivity, childhood abuse, maltreatment, and familial hostility and criticism. As was mentioned, it is very important to take up to take a look at the dynamics of the family. How you know the mother yesterday was very reactive, the father was nonchalant, the father was ambivalent, sometimes good, sometimes bad. And it must have been a very and they were quarreling between the, the couples, between the parents, were quarreling on how to handle her. And of course, you have to consider interpersonal vulnerability factors no? and interpersonal vulnerability factors is, of course, affected by poor communication skills. I emphasized that to them yesterday that as long as you don't tell your mother what is going on with you, how could she guess when she has her own problems as well with your brother and your father. There are only four in the family, two children and the couple. They have very poor social problem solving. Mother would, in this case, mother would go out whenever the problem gets bigger in the house, except instead of trying to pacify their his daughter. And of course, in the case of uh, Rob, it was also known that the uh, mother has reached to the point that he doesn't know what to do anymore. I am uh, supervising uh, Rob about this case, and I say that the next time there should be uh, some kind of family session as well in between. Stress response, whereas stressful events triggers over or under arousal. So stressful events presents unmanageable social demands. NSSI specific vulnerability factors, therefore, are following. 
social learning hypothesis, social punishment hypothesis, social signaling, as was mentioned, hypothesis, uh, pragmatic hypo hypothesis, and pain analgesia opiate hypothesis, and implicit identification hypothesis. So we have to take this all into consideration. How do you manage? Psychotherapy is effective in reducing NSSI. It has been found out though, that there is no clear which approach is superior. Okay, let me see. Back to two, two slides back. Yeah. Actually, there is a um, recommendation that the psychotherapy should be the dialectical behavioral therapy, as was earlier mentioned by Rob, that they are what they are uh, using now with this particular uh, patient, wherein you really tell them how to cope, how to, you know, it's, we have to remember that NSSI is not the symptom to focus, but we have to think of what really is going on. This is just a symptom that not the disease, okay? Then there is no clear dialectical uh, baby therapy issues, and of course, the more recent is using mentalizing behavioral therapy. Early on, the CBT has been used. Now, for the information of our young listeners, especially the young residents and the students, is that when we are given the task to do psychotherapy in a patient, the first question of a novice or a new person doing psychotherapy will be, what kind of psychotherapy shall I use? And they want, they want a label of it. They want to say dialectical by it all, or uh, am I going to use mentalizing? Am I going to use CBT? It is very clearly mentioned in almost all of our readings in the NSSI that it is very good to go on, but not just to focus on a name of what you are going to use. The basic thing to do, remember this, the basic thing to do when do you, doing psychotherapy in NSSI, as well as for any cases at all, is to remember that you have a psychological, theoretical framework, meaning, I remember even in my own training from long years ago, is that you have to be adept in the evolution or the different stages of getting old. You know, from childhood up to the, you know, the time, my time. I still, if I will go to therapy, I have my own uh, issues in my in myself, right? Which is different from the time when I was young. So keep a framework of what is the reality of that person in that particular age, whether she is on time, behind in time, or against on time, against time. Munang, there is always a need for us to master the different phases, whatever you follow. You follow the Ericksonian, you follow you know, the Jungian concepts. But when we say psychodynamic, it also involves every, all of this. In the time of we don't get to be afraid that are we doing it right. I remember very well before that when you do psychotherapy and you improve the life of your patient, my supervisor said, what is important is that you made a dent in his life, you must have done right. 
So, so do not be afraid. Psychotherapy na ginagamit ko lang supportive. Maybe that particular time, that's all what the person needs because a deeper interpretation would not do any good to him at that particular time, di ba? So go on. Do not be afraid. And I am sad with the fact that some of our young psychiatrists are trying to say, ah, yung psychotherapy, ibig guys sa psychologist, hindi yan trabaho ng psychiatrist. That is where the mistake of the Western, not, not in fact, the Western world, but I think but basically in America, that's why they lost their chance to do psychotherapy because training in psychotherapy is not no longer the focus of a training uh, program. Kailangan talaga. What will you do with the medication if you do not really address what is paining inside the person, which is producing the chemical changes in the brain? So, yung chemical changes na palagi mo iniisip, pero but you are not thinking also what is the reality of that person. I really would ask our young mentors, in the training program to strengthen the young psychiatrist capabilities to do a sensible psychotherapy. I mean, whatever you call it. But of course, when I say whatever you call it, again, as about what I mean is follow a theoretical framework. Huh? Dili lang basta basta gusto mong pag usap You are not just there to talk. Okay? <laughs> ah. Okay, pharmacotherapy. Evidence of medication for NSSI treatment is currently insufficient. But do not be afraid because many of us who are using, who are seeing our borderline traits or our borderline personality disorders, we do use medication because by its definition, the borderline personality go into mini, mini, M-I-N-I, mini psychotic episodes, di ba? But it depends on the circumstances of their lives. Do not be afraid to give antipsychotics with it, no? Probably in low dose. You, or use pharmacology. I, I, in, well, if I cannot, I cannot uh, convince a patient who had borderline traits traits, not disorder, and would not be able to control their impulsivity, to not sleep, will have symptoms of depression, of course, you have to use pharmacotherapy. And I tell you, the ball game is really very wide. What, you, up to this point in time, only the, the country of Germany has some guidelines about BPD. But their guidelines is not as yet as clear also that it is acceptable even by the entire population, psychiatrists or health, my health workers. No? So actually, it's there. That's why I, I said, you know, I like, I like the, the uh, lectures of some well-known psychiatrists who says that you, in your own judgment, your patient needs this medication or needs this therapy. You have a framework. Why do you think so? Do it. But always follow through the patient. Because every individual is different. Different history, different biological makeup, different psychological or pharmacological reactions. Okay? A randomized control trial showed decrease in NSSI, in NSSI among adults with BPD during treatment with a repeat person. The reason why we use a repeat person here is not because we were thinking of representing this today. We were thinking of what the patient needed. And we thought of giving uh, a repeat person in low dose, five milligrams, and to see how it is uh, 
affecting her. And of course, the antidepressant, because clearly there were some depressive symptoms also in Alexa. And by the way, uh, we have this to discuss that we have decreased the amount to 10 milligrams, right? Yeah, yeah. so we are going low and go slow. And we will follow up the case. And I told Ron, Ron that one of, one of the things you have to remember in borderline trait patients is that they may like you or don't like you. They, they go only to the extremes. But if they like you, they wait because they don't want to cease therapy. And they will threaten suicide. But of course, threaten suicide. But I look on Puka. Oh, the mangi. The bang at the dictum is do not take any light threat of suicide. The bang. Take it seriously because it's better to get wrong on the side of the cautious than to be neglectful. So thank you very much for remembering this. I would like to give you one quotation which I hope will make you remember what you will be doing next in your next patient who has an SSI. Hope means hoping when everything seems hopeless. And that is what you are going to impart to your patients. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the audience? Okay, thank you very much to our dear speaker and our case presenter, no? so Dr. Puri and Dr. Rob. So now we're here for our uh, questions and answers that we may get from the audience and from our viewers. Right? It is indeed a very interesting topic and uh, it has not been really fully discussed because usually Doc Diba, we always refer to them as most likely suicidal. No, and we forget to further assess that what is this really suicidal? Although eventually Siguro Doc they will become no or, or are there cases yes. that okay. eventually they will really commit suicide? You did. I would like him to answer. He's very good. By the way, I forgot. I forgot to uh, state that he also helped me in my making the slides. Sabi ko sa kanya, you know, na iingit ako sa mga psychiatrists sa Manila, kasi pagkatapos ng yung iba, pagkatapos ng kanilang presentation, they would say, I would like to thank my best my resident for helping me in my slides. So <laughs> It was, um, so the cases with NSSI who would eventually develop suicidal ideation or plans um, usually would reach as high as 60%. Mm. Yes. But generally, the only the minority. Mm. So only minority, although eventually mga 60%. percent maximum. Mm, maximum. Up to oh. 60%. Yes. 20, 20, 20 to 60. 60. Mm. This might be a call also for us to come up with uh, measures to do more studies because this is already included in the DSM 5TR, the section Reverse two. Criteria. And uh, yeah, okay, so the NSSI. So I think the problem is that we do have articles and researches, pero parang kulang pa, no? 
Uh, about uh, we, do not have, we do not have data from the Philippines. and the one in the Germany, I think that was a consensus guideline. Oh, pa. Oh, no, okay, so even here in the Philippines, we don't have yet. It's a very varied population that goes into NSSM. I mean, varied in the sense the age may be already a great upon, but the factors that seems to be the risk factors are very varied. I remember, Doc, when you mentioned that uh, they seem to group together because I'm also treating a patient right now. She is about 23 years old. She is uh, actually a medical student and she's cutting herself and she has a friend who is also a cutter. We call them cutters sometimes, yeah, no? Yeah. They self-injury sila. And they talk to each other, how did you do it? Ako, I did it like this, no? O pustahan tayo. Oh. They, got, they, they actually bet. That's they true, you know. No, yeah. Did, how did you do it? Oh. I did it in my thigh here like that, no? O ako, I did it here or somewhere. And then whoever has the more wounds will get a hundred pesos for a hundred pesos lang and i cannot also imagine how this person might be hopefully she can still be helped because if she will become a doctor someday no but that's true there are deeper uh wounds no emotional wounds inside and partly uh, in the family so do we have any questions from the Audience. Oh yes, <laughs> Doctor Bong, Doctor Toffee. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank, of course, the presenter, of course, the discussant was a very stimulating um, topic. Well, my, my question is, is because the profile is pre predominantly female, what is, what is the basis for this? Is it because, in fact, I was discussing Bong earlier, is it probably because uh, for females, it's not socially acceptable to express anger outside? Or is it does it have an, um, a biological component? Um, I, I'm just very intrigued while it's predominantly a female population that cuts. Actually, there is nothing written on it, but I just, this is just my speculation. Uh, women go to menstrual cycle every month. So I, I, I would like to find out if those women who does NSSI are also getting their premenstrual uh, going down, you know, not a, a, a real depression, no? Now, second is that in women, it is not acceptable to have bruises, to have, to have marks and all those that, unlike to men, that parabang okay yan. Okay, like for example, there, is, there was a question whether tattooing or uh piercing is uh part of the nssi no i mean makita mo yung tattooing grabe yung shadow you know, how much pain could they have that but even that thing which is always happening more in men than women are not are not given attention they say no 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 a good number would say no it's art it's art well, I think it depends on the eye of the beholder and the person who also undergoing it. But isn't it also like it may be look, looking nice, but it is destroying your your uh, skin. In a sense, like, that is not the normal way of making your uh, your dermatologist that. So, yeah, so that is what I meant. And I think the fourth is that probably... Uh, men would not acknowledge it as uh, their response because it is a response of emotion. How many men would accept emotion of sadness, emotion, well, anger, okay, 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 but they don't ever think, they don't ever share that. Very few. But probably what they do is just only actually in a suicide, but this morning, I know yesterday morning, somebody in Cebu, a medical student, a medical nurse, jumped off from the floor. 
but they do it didn't show love love no but anyway men usually don't don't share their feelings so probably that's the reason why we it could be still less but not that less or is it still because we are the weaker sex? Which I don't agree. <laughs> and here's another question also. Uh, may I ask how her impulsive cutting behaviors, her inability to regulate her emotions, may be differentiated from normal risk taking behavior or inability to regulate emotions during adolescence? Hmm. Well, the risk taking behaviors in adolescence is usually um, when it comes to using drugs of abuse or drinking alcohol. But um, aside from drugs of abuse, drinking alcohol is a socially acceptable way of um, risk taking. It's not like cutting yourself, which is um, not socially acceptable. So that can be a huge difference in seeing NSSI as uh, seeing the cutting and the um, the cutting as different from the um, risk taking behavior. But although um, this is from the DSM five criteria of borderline personality, um, the cutting of the risk is. Um, separate from the risk-taking behavior criteria. So I guess in that sense, um, they're separate. Mm. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. And here's another one. Good evening, doctors. Do we consider NSSI to be pathognomonic for borderline personality? Almost always, um, no. but if we're going to base it on the criteria, you need five out of nine criteria. So um, there are some patients with borderline personality disorder that may also not present with um, 